Our special guest today has been on the Steve Harvey Show, Good Morning America, and the Today Show, just to name a few. He's an American actor, comedian, and television personality who is quickly becoming one of the most energizing in-demand voices. Let's welcome to the show, DJ Pryor. That's my noise when I, when I, when I need a crowd noise. That's, That's the virtual background noise. That's the virtual background <laughs> There you go. DJ, what's going on? How you feeling today? How you doing? Good, man. I'm great, man. I'm so I'm so happy to be here with you, man. This is going to be super dope. It's some uh, old friends chopping it up. You know what I mean? So I'm pretty excited about it, man. But I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I have no complaints. I can say I knew you when, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, nah, man, it's, it's been a while. We've been on this journey for a while, brother. Most definitely. And I've been seeing DJ all over TV. Whoever's listening out there and you haven't seen DJ, you got to look him up because he is funny and you will basically get a workout just listening to him. So it's, uh, <laughs> Thank it's you, man. Time. It's really good. <laughs> but the biggest question I have for, for you is what made you want to become a performer and what inspired you? Is that a child life dream or is that something when you got older? Um, I, I, I like to say, man, like I didn't choose this. It chose me. Um, it was it was literally just um me taking life's experiences. Uh, I, I grew up the way I grew up. Uh, my mother had me at 13 years old. And so I had a very young, having a very young mom, I got to see life from a different perspective uh, because my mom made a lot of young choices. And so um, going through a lot of the things I went through, um, I, I went through abuse as a child and things like that. And comedy just served as an outlet um, to, to be able to uh, make others happy and, and make myself in, in making others happy and ma it made me happy. So um, I just pull from from what I knew, you know what I'm saying? And it was I think it was crazy for such a young kid to have such a unique perspective uh, just because the things I had gone through was so mature, things that, you know, normal kids didn't get introduced to. I was introduced to at a very young age. Uh, so I knew a lot about things I shouldn't have known about. And uh, just to talk about it in my in my truth and my honesty, whether I knew that's what it was, I didn't know it was it was comedy. I just thought I was telling the truth, you know. And it turned into being something comedic. I had a teacher that suggested that you know you should you should maybe think about performing stand up comedy. And I didn't even know what it was. And then one day I saw I heard a record uh, play. My grandma had a record play, and I listened to uh, old Richard Pryor record. And he was saying all these beautiful words. And I was like, oh, that's me. And then I saw Eddie Murphy a couple of weeks later. I saw him on uh, TV and he was in his rather, this leather red suit. And, and, you know, I saw Delirious for the first time. And that was just, and I was like, this is me. I am them, they are me. And um, it made me want to, to do this for the rest of my life and just making people laugh, getting out of trouble. Comedy got me out of trouble. If I liked the girl, it got me the girl. It was just God's gift to me. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta take adventures. I'm doing this the rest of my life. <laughs> that's awesome. That is really awesome. Do you think a lot of your life uh, is on stage? Or most of your jokes, do you feel like they come from like the root of what happened? Yeah, yeah. I think I think there's some there's a there's a richness to authenticity. You know what I mean? Like you can't fake it. You know what I mean? Like people know the audience knows when you're when you're just saying something and when you're coming from a real place. And I try to ground all my jokes in some version of the truth. Um, and I think that's what people, what resonates with people is that there's some, there's some way I'm a mirror for the audience that's watching me, that they see themselves in, um, they see themselves in me, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I think that's where it pulls from pulling from that honesty at what I found is that's what makes a performance great is when you pull from something that you really know and that you really lived. Um, so yeah, yeah, I definitely do. That's great. And um, do you think you became a comedian first, then an actor? Did a follow yeah. up? That? You know what? I think they were. Um, I think they might have been going around the same time. You know, and, uh, that's because I was. Uh, you know, I would. I was always acting. You know, I was always acting. I was. You know, my cousin did something. I wanted him to get in trouble. You know, he might have nudged me a little bit. I'm. Oh, oh, you know, dramatic. Oh, you know, and my girlfriend, what you do to him? And, and, and he got in trouble. And so uh, I started acting very early. Uh, so I think they might have happened around the same time. But professionally, yes, stand-up comedy definitely did come. Um, well, no, you know, I was doing stage plays. I was doing stage plays. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I guess around the same time, they just came at different points, but they were, they were still kind of around the same time because I was doing stage plays and I was doing, uh, but I wasn't, I hadn't professionally done stand-up comedy yet. So maybe acting came first, uh, you know, as far as me getting people seeing me on stage. But when I got to a certain age, I was like, yo, I do want to try to get on stage and be funny. Um, but I was doing stuff at the house all the time. I was always getting up in front of, you know, my, my aunties and them to have a cookout. And they say, my auntie would say, you can cuss this time. Get up there and tell some jokes and make them laugh. You know what I mean? And I, <laughs> and I would get up and I'd be cussing my little butt off. And, um, and, it, was, and it was cool. So I guess they happened around the same time. But professionally, uh, acting might have, that might have been the first time people really saw me. I knew I wanted to be an actor and I knew comedy would help me get a shoe in but then yeah i think probably maybe the acting was first and you were free entertainment for your parents and family <laughs> oh man yeah free they had to pay nobody i was the entertainment you know what i'm saying and it's great when you when there's a kid that was on but like i could be on punishment right mm -hmm. and they would literally take me off punishment just to come down and perform for their friends and then send me back up tomorrow that's awesome you know what i mean it's, it's crazy like you off right now you good right now and it meant freedom to me so you know of course i'm a you know i'm a dance and i'm an actor fool and i'm a, yeah you know and it got me out of trouble for that moment. And then after that, it was, you know, and I might have got some of the charges dropped. So that means I won't get a whooping, but I still got to do the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> it worked out for me. So I was like, comedy is, is life. And then somebody told me, you can get rich doing it. And I was like, I can get rich? I ain't never had that much money. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, this is it. This is it. This is the way to life. So, yeah. That's how, that's, how my, that's how I started off. That was my thought. Yeah. And speaking about laughter, do you feel that laughter can help people emotionally heal if they're going through problems like depression and anxiety? Do you feel that's something they should have in their life? Yeah, man. I think laughter is um I think laughter it it it, it takes a person to a place to where you, when you can not take life so serious, you think about a lot of things that stress us. A lot of it's really not as serious as we make it, you know, um, or it could be, but you don't have control over it anyway. So it's like, then, then, you know, why am I going to drive myself nuts? You know, what I mean, going crazy over something that I have no control over, absolutely no control over. And I think when I when when people think like that and they begin to just laugh at situations, you start to see that it doesn't have effect because your body responds to stress, mm -hmm. right? And laughter is naturally a de-stressor. So when you're stressing out your body, your blood pressure, everything is raising and elevated and, and you're about to give yourself a heart attack. But laughter allows this level of calm, this level of poise, this level of acceptance to certain things. And, and, uh, and it just makes you, you can see clearer when you're happy. And laughter brings happiness, you know, um, and it brings joy. And, and I think that that is something that that the world could use a lot more of. Um, and so I've always used laughter as a weapon uh, in my darkest days. Like I said, I, I was abused as a child. Mm -hmm. Laughter served as a medicine. Right. And, and, and I, you know, even the Bible talks about that of laughter being a medicine. You know, laughter is a natural has a natural healing mechanism in it. That when you laugh, there's something that releases in you. You know what I mean? Like endorphins that release in you yeah. from laughter. You know what I'm saying? And 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 this. So you think about when you think about the science of of of, of, of laughter. You know what I'm saying? And, and the science of of the whole of, of comedy. All the, it's an amazing, an amazing superpower. I just think it's dope. Yeah, you're absolutely know? right. The endorphins release, serotonin release, everything yeah. that you need. And as you said, even though you can't go to a show right now, comedy is essential. A lot of comedians oh, man. try to do virtual. Do you do any virtual shows for people? You know, I, I, you know, virtual is a, is a, is a challenge for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be more. I did, I did. I have done one. I've done a few, actually. Um, and they are cool, and I love it. It's just, it's just uh, it's, you know, when you've been on the stage, you know, for so long. I've been on stage almost 20 years. It's, it's hard to... It's hard to not get that immediate feedback. You know what I mean? I'm and as a performer, like yeah, exactly, exactly. And miming, and you're like, is it, is it funny? Did you like it? What about you? You know, it's like you try to figure out where you are, right? You know, what I'm saying, yeah, thumbs up, it's good. You know, um, so it's it's really a challenge. Um, but I I am actually going to be back in the in the club uh, this upcoming week. 
um, just working out new material, man. But it, it is it it has been a challenge to uh, to adjust to to uh, the new age and and world we live in. But yeah, comedy is definitely essential, man. I'm an essential worker. I'm an essential worker. You know. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. Yeah. Like, right. Laughing, like like you said, the best medicine. And how yeah. do you stay fit for all your traveling? And I know you're traveling from back and forth from Tennessee to LA to other places, especially if performers travel a lot. What do you do at your hotel? What do you do to get ready for your shows? What do you do this to stay healthy and keep your mind sharp with a family? You got three kids. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, honestly, I, I think um, I, I do this thing. You've seen it. The routine when I'm, I'm punching, I'm air punching. I still do that. I, oh, really? it, it gets me. I'm air drunk roping. I can't drunk rope in real life, but it, <laughs> what, what anybody can do it when you do it with the air. Uh, I, I do all that. And um, I've always saw my audience like family but i see them as an opponent that i have to go conquer ah. and and so with stand-up comedy i am i'm seeing this as a boxing match and i'm 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 all this and i'm you know what i mean i'm all that so because i'm getting out of here and i have to work against that person that came to the show that says, mm, whatever, we'll see. You know, I got to work against certain mindsets. I got to work against certain, uh, just, just, I got to work. I'm fighting negativity, depression. I'm fighting so many things when I'm on the stage because when I'm on the stage, it's, a, it's a one man with one microphone telling a joke in one hour. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to make, ooh, that's a good, that's a good quote. That's a, that's good right there. I like that. I'm gonna write that down later. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm a, I see the, the audience as an opponent. And so that's one of the things that keeps me um, going right, right before the shows. Uh, I, I get my head, my, my head space uh, really good, really focused on what I'm trying to go out here and achieve. Uh, but what I do more than anything, I just live a consistent, happy life. It doesn't mean I don't have bad days. I just live a consistent, happy life. Um, so it's, I think staying fit for myself um, has, has been more of a, of a mental battle than it has been a, a, a physical. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, I need to get, I need to get the gym. Uh, I, and that's, we're going to talk about that. We need to get, you know what I mean? But, uh, but I think right now, mostly for me, it's the mental, you know what I mean? Just keeping, staying his course, you know, staying my course on making sure that I'm evolving as an entertainer and, and I'm growing as an entertainer with my art form and, and, uh, you know, because especially with COVID being what it is and keeping somebody like me trapped, this is the longest I've been in, in 19 years of not being on stage in my 19 year career. So um, to to make it, it's really just been fighting the mental, like really staying in the creative space, not get discouraged. Like, oh, my God, when is it going to stop? When am I going to be on stage? I'm never going to be able to do it again. Uh, the, the staying healthy has really just been being around things that promote good ideas, uh, good, good, you know, just, just good energy. Those are the things that keep me healthy right now. So I do things that make me happy. I skip, Jason. When was the last time you had a good skip? Uh, you know how happy you had me to skip? I'm skipping tomorrow. Skip tomorrow, right. whatever they say. <laughs> <laughs> you got to skip sometimes. Every now and again. That's funny. I'm not going to lie. It's funny to see a grown man with a beard skip. It's hilarious. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a very happy, happy thing to skip. Same and I skip, day. Jason. St. Patty's Day, you'll see a lot of skipping on the guys with the kilts. <laughs> Down the street, they'll be drunk as a skunk, right? It's a <laughs> so with the skipping guys. This is amazing. Irish jig skipping, and now, <laughs> so uh, kind of going off of skipping uh, stage fright. If someone has stage fright, like I dealt with a lot of stage fright, still do. Yeah. But um, what do you do for stage fright, or does that not phase you? Uh, and if someone has stage fright, what would you do when you're first starting out? Like, what was your routine? The same thing you're doing uh, what you mentioned, or is it a different routine for stage fright that you get a big, huge audience? You're like, oh my, yeah. Life. Yeah, you, do. I, you know, you know, what's crazy. And this is, this is every time I say this, people look at me like I'm crazy. You know, honestly, when I first started, I was 14, 15 years old. Um, I was just ignorant enough in, in the sense of just not knowing, just not being aware what the rules were. That I didn't care about consequences of breaking them. 
Mm. You know what I mean? So what I mean by that is I just, I didn't, I didn't know fear. I was already in a bad situation where I came from. I came from the projects. It was, you know, when somebody get murdered in your backyard, you know, every so often and things like that. When you come from that, you start to be, you know, you fear very little, you know. Uh, so a crowd rejecting me wasn't really that uh, serious to me. I, that was just something that was like, oh, okay, I don't care. I'm going to go out here and say what I say. And you like it. You don't. I don't care. You know, that was my attitude as a kid. I am actually more now nervous at this age, at this point in my career, than I ever was starting out. And, and the reason why is because you have so much more um, to be accountable for and you have so much more to lose. Then it was just like, you don't like me, cool. I'm, I'm about to walk back to the projects either way. So whether I, whether I kill it or fail tonight, I'm still going back to the projects. I'm not going to be rich tonight. So it didn't matter. But now, you know, where, when you live in this hypersensitive world, you know, where you have to censor, where comedians are being asked to censor our material, yeah. um, then, then you, you, you think a little, you think a little different. And I just, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of guy, I'm just going to give it to you. If I feel it, I'm going to give it to you. And, and, and if you can't take my truth or you can't take my honesty or even my opinion on something, then you should probably not buy another ticket to come see me but you know um so right now in that vein trying to i think when a comic decides that they're going to do this art form mm -hmm. that they have to give it they you know your truth better than anybody knows your truth and when you speak your truth it's not going to resonate with everybody you know what i'm saying yeah. um and understanding that it's not going to you know that it's not going to resonate with everybody um you got to be okay with that that because that's his life period. Everybody's not going to like you. You know what I'm saying? And so as I think I, I, I see it, um, am I, I'm nervous every time I get on stage and, and, a, and an older comic, he, he passed away now, but he gave me this advice. He said, DJ, the day you don't uh, that you're not you don't go on a stage and you're not nervous. That's the day you're going to mess it up. Your nervousness sh should always be channeled into your energy on stage. And so that's what I've always done. You see my performance. My I, every time you've ever seen me go on stage, I was nervous. But my energy, my nervousness just travels into my energy on the stage. And that's what makes me um, that's what makes me do what it is I do. That's how I perform the way I do. So it's controlling the anxiety and channeling it properly. That's channeling it properly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Blank and then their anxiety just took over. So you have it in your path, basically. Yeah. You're Thank yeah, you. and it takes a while. It takes a while, you know, for a performer or anybody to to learn how to do that. You know, what I mean, that's that's not a thing you're gonna get your first performance. That's something that's gonna keep going that you gotta keep working at. But once you learn that, you know, um, you know, hey man, only one of us got the mic. Yeah. You know, that's how I look at it. Only one of us got the mic. I, I've told people, you know, I've dealt with hecklers. You know, and yeah, hey man, listen, hey, this could be a whole other show. Only one of us got the microphone. That's that's my advantage. I have a microphone. You don't. You know. And, and and they're going to say whatever they say. And that's cool. And, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm going to work. I'm going to come and do what I came here to do, which is make people laugh and, and do my job. So, uh, yeah, channeling the, the nervousness and make it that that energy, that nervous energy work for you. It's not there to work against you. It's actually your friend. It is actually your friend. Lean into it. That's what I would tell somebody. Lean into that that nervous energy because it's actually there to help you. It's there, it's there to assist you. You are more funny when you are raw. <laughs> when you are just raw ball of nerves, you are more funny. It's, it, and it's, I don't know if it's something about watching a person extremely nervous or it's funny about watching somebody stating their truth and you know it's their truth because they're so nervous they can't lie right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't know anything but truth right now. That's what makes them nervous. Uh, I think that's just a funny thing to watch. That's that, that that is definitely what I have to use from now on. That's yeah, really good tips for everyone listening. But right after the break, we're gonna hear from more from DJ Pryor. We're back here with actor, comedian, and also performer DJ Pryor. DJ, in your own words, what do you think wellness is in your own words? Uh, wellness is, um, when I think wellness, I think of just, um, 
a, a healthy space, right? Whatever that means for each individual. Uh, wellness is it could be in the in the sense of of, of just um, you know you might some people like knitting things like that. You know that promotes some kind of wellness for them. You know what I mean because it's, it's an incredible uh, happy place. Uh, wellness. So the equivalent to wellness to me is happiness. Um, because I know people that have worked out that, that work out all the time, but they were very unhappy people or are, are, are very unhappy people. So I think wellness is just a state of, of mind. First thing, I think everything starts with the mind. Uh, if you're going to work out, I mean, you know, this better than anybody, you know, when you work out your body initially does not want to do that workout, yeah. you know, your body and maybe even in the middle of it, you know, why you is so intense you're literally breaking down these muscles to swell them up, to make them, you know, whatever it is. So I think wellness is just a, a, a happy state of mind. That's what I, I think in, in, in a summary. Wellness is just a happy state of mind to me. That's, yeah, that's great. Yeah, everyone has a different uh, version of wellness, but that's, that's very true. Right. Uh, just because you are fit doesn't mean you're well. That's a good thing. That's a very that good part. thing. That part. Yes. Uh, yes. The truth. Because I know a lot of people who are who are who who have a life that you look at and you go, man, that's an ideal life. That's the the American dream. That's the and they are they are more sad than anybody else I know. You know what I mean? And so they're not well. You know, they might be you know well and healthy doesn't necessarily mean the same thing. You know what I mean? Like you know, you can be healthy and still not well. You know what I mean? And so, uh, yeah, I think I think wellness just means that to me is a, it's a just a happy state of, of mind and, a, and which makes you encourages you to do all the other things, which is working out and doing all the other things that that are connected to wellness that we know the physicality of wellness. Yeah, that's correct. And for you, um, do you feel that knowing more about wellness has helped you in your performances? Or traveling oh, yeah. the other people? Yeah, I think uh, well, learning about it has has um, helped me with a great deal of empathy, mm -hmm. right? Um, just learning other people's stories um, and how they correlate to what I'm talking about on stage. You know what I mean? Um, and I and and to be a relatable comic, you have to be able to speak several different languages. You know what I mean? I have to be able to give my opinion and my point of view while seeing why you see like the way you see it and, and be able to talk about that. So then a person can hear my view and then go, what? And then, oh, okay, I never thought about that. And then you hear me say your view and go, yeah, that, 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 you know? So now you feel like we're all in this thing together as opposed to you come and sit on the front row and I say, yo, you white guy. Yeah, you real white. You know, <laughs> going in the whole time, talking about your whiteness. You can't help it. Um, but I think when I start to approach uh my performances in a way to where i start to see people for who they are and where they are then it helped me ultimately as a as a, as a performer because it, it makes you number one it makes you really right mm -hmm. and it makes you right careful not in the sense of being scared to offend anybody but it makes you right in how can i make this joke inclusive you know what i'm saying how can i make this joke all around inclusive to make everybody love it you know what I mean? And that's ultimately what I do. I tell this joke on stage about, uh, you know, you know, a person's remember there was a time where we knew a person's race by the crime they committed. Oh, yeah. You know, you remember that joke? And I, and I used to say that, and, you know, you knew a person's race by the crime they committed. Yeah. And, and so I say this joke and, and, and I have it on YouTube. And if you look in the audience, it's, it's pretty much predominantly an all white audience. And in the joke, I say somebody get killed from some Jordans. Black people, that's us. You know, that's ours. Don't touch our crime. That's our crime. White people don't try to steal it. That belongs to us. And I said, somebody get killed, chopped up, sleep on anybody for a week. White people, that's y'all. That's, that's, that's y'all move. We don't do those moves. That's not our crime. That's y'all crime. And, and when I tell this joke, you know, you would think people get offended. Though it was predominantly white. And they love that joke. Yeah. They love the joke because it is an all-inclusive joke, which is, is saying that we both commit crimes yeah. we both do things that we shouldn't do but here's what we typically do and here's what you typically do but it's an all-inclusive joke you know what i'm saying it's not a it's not a one-sided joke it's a it's a everybody can laugh at this joke when we really examine 
uh, what history has shown us shown, shown us to be true. And police stats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look, at, that's, I, that's what I said. I said, you know, you don't you don't gotta like the joke, you know, just but check it out. Re, do your research. <laughs> Those are the stats. <laughs> that's awesome. So I love this interview because I get to laugh at the same time, have a great time. Right. That right. Is, which is real good. <laughs> The one thing I did see on your bio is it says you have launched a nonprofit organization called uh, Prior to Change. Yeah. Talk about that. There's something new. I haven't seen that yet. So I love the Yeah. Hand. Prior to Change uh, is, like you said, my nonprofit. I wanted to create an umbrella where uh, it really focused on me giving back because um, a lot of times celebrities take, 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 take. And I didn't want to take, 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 take. I wanted to give back. So what I give uh, put back into um, the world in a, in a very positive way. And growing up, like I told you, I grew up in the projects and I felt like um, I grew up in a community that was very overlooked uh, in a sense of I had we had people making decisions for our community that didn't live in our community. You know what I'm saying? So it was very easy to say what should be happening in inner city youth and the inner city. And none of these people are inner city youth. Uh, you know, what I mean? so it's kind of like they never even they don't even like driving through the inner city to talk about what should happen in the inner city. So um, I said when I got to a place of influence that I would take uh, my my influence, my finances and everything and back, uh, give back to the communities that are overlooked, like the one I came from. And so, um, you know, because there's a lot of people that don't that don't know that there's better out there. They know, but they don't they haven't been shown. And I found that uh, sometimes change, you want people to change their behavior. You have to inspire it. You can't just demand it. You have to inspire it. Right. And uh, I wanted to while people were looking at me and say, oh, look how successful he is. Oh, you know, he, you know, he's on TV. He's doing this. He's doing that. I wanted to show them that there was another way uh, to live life. And I had friends that had never really seen outside of this perimeter that we lived in. Uh, but I was fortunate enough to, you know, grow up and be able to travel and, and see the world, you know, telling jokes and doing what I love. And, and even being a musician, I was a traveling musician, fun fact about me. I was a traveling musician from ages 12 to 17. So I got to see a lot of the world and got to see a lot of the, you know, the country or whatever. So I just wanted to show uh, young people more so that there's better to life and, and, and that we hear what your dreams are. And I wanted to personally get behind these young people and support them in their dreams and whatever it is they want to do. Um, to, to be able to fund it and, and get them. So if they say they want to be an astronaut, let's connect them with, you know, some some astronauts and, and give them a tour of, of NASA and show them that you can do this. Because sometimes people just need to know that it is possible. And I think when we do that, we will start to see change in our world and our communities, but in ultimately in our world. So that's what prior change is focusing on, building, restructuring families, uh, inspiring our youth, uh, supporting our youth, uh, helping um, families get on their feet uh, that have, have fallen in situations. There's a misconception that people in the projects are just bad people. And that's not the case. It's it's people have situations uh, that, that happen sometimes through a choice they made or, you know, life dealt them a bad hand or whatever the case be. But uh, just to show people that it's not all gloom and doom, that it's that that uh, there's, there's a lot of positive positivity out there and there's a lot of opportunity out there. And if there is not, then to give them the tools to go create themselves. And that's what prior change is dedicated to. And I'm, I'm really, really more than anything in my career right now, I'm so proud of prior to change and, and what we're doing right now, we're focusing on a lot of partnerships. Um, and, and so this first year, we're just going to be worried about partnerships, focus on that. And, uh, but we're really getting our, putting, putting our, you know, getting our feet on the ground and, and really getting active uh, with the things we want to do in these communities, starting locally, of course, and then, statewide then nationally and then internationally and they say environment is part of your wellness you yeah environment so that you're making these kids environment a lot better yeah they're allowed to have a better wellness like financial wellness or yeah like just choices you give them choices yeah. it's really awesome that you're doing that for people yeah thank you man yeah thank I, I mean that's so important i think when you tell somebody you can have this you know it, that's important. It's important when you tell a person, yo, you can live like this. It's, it's as simple as saying it and going and doing it. It's just that simple. It's, it's, it's no, there's no specific, you know, particular formula to it. It's, 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 if you want it, go get it. And 
Um, sometimes a person just needs to see somebody who's done that. And I will, and I would love to sit here and act like you know I'm just I'm just that guy. I mean, no, I, I've had people that believed in me, that that said you could, um, but I not as much as I would have liked. You know, I've probably had more people that were against me. Uh, but to show, it is my responsibility now to show people that you can do this. You know what I mean? And show fathers and and mother like the, you can do this you can buy a piece of property right now and put it in your 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 child's name mm-hmm. to pass something down to them why don't we talk like that yeah. you know and it's, so it's my job to show them this is the conversations we need to be having you know what i mean that's that's what i'm on i'm on buying property for my kids now while they're kids putting it in their name i wish parents did that for me <laughs> right exactly oh man i would have loved that to be done for me you know and i think you know it, it, sometimes if people were in that position to do that, they would. But some people are just not in the position. They don't. It's not that they don't have. They lack the brains of it. They think it's a good idea. Idea too. It's just I don't have the position. But my job is to help people get in those positions to do things like that. And ultimately, I think we will see a better world. They say knowledge is power. So giving them knowledge, I just learned something new. I didn't think about that. You could put your name on someone else's property, and then yeah. you could pay for it, but they own it. Yeah. Another part is Notable Live. I see that you partnered with them. What is Notable Live and what's all about? Look, you see, I don't oh, yeah. You got the co- okay. There you go. Commercial break. Right there. <laughs> uh, Notable Live is this amazing platform uh, co created by uh, uh, Emmett Smith. Amazing. And if you know Emmett Smith, oh, yeah, everybody yeah, knows it. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I saw this platform. I came across it when they had first launched it. I did like a soft launch and I saw it. I was like, what is this? And uh, when I went on the site, I thought it was amazing because they were, it was basically uh, a way for people to connect with people they look up to or, they, you know, they found uh, that they admired that are notables, you know, celebrities. And so it was just a way for them to come on like me and you were talking right now and they can come on here and talk to their favorite celebrity. And I just thought, I said, that's very unique. I've never seen something like that to where I could you know, buy tickets to something and, and you perform or you, you, you I watch you have a conversation. Uh, and then after that, I can come on screen and talk to you. And I thought that was very innovative. And I told them I wanted to get on the ground floor of this. And so I uh, I did that. I got on the ground floor of it and uh, it's been amazing. And so now I'm doing, that's where I'm doing a lot of my virtual events on Notable Live. So I have something called Up Close and Personal where I just talk to my fans and they get to ask me questions and they come on screen and ask me questions. I'm doing that on uh, March 13th. And then we have uh, uh, another event on, on March 27th, I believe. So, man, it's just been amazing uh, to, to partner with Notable Live. They're an amazing company. Uh, and they're, and they've, a lot more celebrities are, are getting familiar with the brand and coming on there. So I'm very, very proud to be one of the uh, one of the people to hit the ground with this running. Uh, one of the you know founding fathers, if you will, with it. I'm, I'm just, I'm excited about it. That, that's something I'll definitely look into because having experience to be able to um, mold a kid, like a mentor, yeah. Thing. Who was your mentor? It sounds like you're a mentor for thousands of people now online. Yeah. yeah. Who was your mentor or was something that you kind of looked at, kind of did your own mentoring because you didn't have the opportunities? Or is that something as you got older, you found a mentor to push you through? You know, I think um, I think my, my dad is a giant to me. Mm-hmm. He's a he he serves as a huge pillar in my life. Um, he and while he was not my biological father. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what makes him even more of a pillar that he didn't have to do the job because I wasn't biologically his and, and he, and he did. And, uh, that is my friend. That is my guy. He is, he is such a, um, he just, he just, he's just an amazing person. And, um, so I learned a lot from him. Uh, but the only thing with me and him clash is his personality is so chill and, you know, he's very passive, you know, and I'm really aggressive and I'm just, you know, so that's what me and him got into it a lot uh, growing up. But he's just he's just an amazing person. So I consider him definitely a mentor. And then my grandfather, who recently passed, my grandfather was, you know, everything to me. And he he served as a very strong example as well. Um, you know, he was the first father I had, you know, uh, before I knew what a dad was. That was who taught me what a father, what a father was. Um, and so. I just took, I never had anybody in the official sense of saying, hey, I'm your mentor. But I had people that I took bits and pieces or for whatever portion of my life they were in my, you know, my dad, he was not, 
uh, like I said, why he wasn't my 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 biological father. He was he was there at a period in my life. Uh, but when it, life first started, it was my grandfather. Then after that, it was nobody. It was my my dad, and then it was nobody, and then it was you know. So it was it was just it was just you know I had those periods, but I took from what I could while these men were around. Uh, and my and my dad is still here now. My biological dad passed away, and even I even took from his failures. I even took from his failures of not being there for me. Uh, I took from his failures, but uh, also I took from him humbling him, himself before he passed away to try to mend it with me. And we and we became good friends before he passed away. So I've had some great examples of of, of just just how to move in life, um, whether they were intending to be those examples or not. <laughs> but but I've had some pretty great examples of of. Um, you know how to move in this life, and and I've and I've taken a little bit of everything and combined it into one person. Uh, at least I've tried anyway. So uh, yeah, I've never. I don't know if I've had anybody in the in the straight mentor uh, ship um, pedestal, but I but I have had uh, you know great examples. Yeah, mentor could be anyone like your family or yeah, and multiple mentors that really help. Yeah, is there anything that I've forgot? in this awesome interview with you, DJ, uh, that you like to tell people? No, nah, man, I'm just, I'm really excited uh, about what was happening, man. I'm, I'm working on a lot of stuff right now. I'm really excited to put things out um, and, and keep working, man, and keep doing stuff that I'm, that I'm proud to represent. Representation is very important. So uh, just, just telling stories right now through film and, and stand up and all of the art forms that I, that I love and I perform and I do. I'm just excited to be in this position to be able to, uh, to do that stuff. Man, it was awesome speaking to you today and getting to laugh with you again. That's awesome. Yes, man. It's like a mini show online. So listen, go, yo, listen, man, people don't understand how far we go back, man. Jason was on the road with me. We were traveling, we were touring. He had the camera out. He was my camera guy. He was my videographer and kept all that. Do you have any of that? He probably don't got none of that footage now, but man, we were on the road. And we we had some great memories, man. It was. Dope. I think I have some still left over, and some on YouTube somewhere scattered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was so much fun, man. It's always great seeing you. Always great being with you, man. But it was awesome, pleasure to have you on the show today, and for your time, really appreciate it. Uh, how do people get a hold of you? I want them to get know how to get a hold of you, and where, and when, and what your next shows are coming up. Uh, comedian DJ Pryor on all social media. Comedian DJ Pryor. Also, you can go on officialdjpryor.com. If you're trying to book me for something, uh, you can reach out through there. But Comedian DJ Pryor on all social media. So everybody reach out to DJ, find him on Facebook, all the media platforms, and you will laugh your pants off. So that's DJ Pryor right there. Thank you, DJ. Have an awesome fit day. And uh, yes. great talking to you. Thank you, brother. You're quite welcome.